along with Graydon. Graydon is my primary reseller. We <clears throat> try to supply the industry with quality testing equipment, chemicals, etc. And <clears throat> excuse me, try to keep our prices in line. That's that's the biggest thing. I'm <clears throat> Mick Farling, I'm Scotch Irish, so the Scotch comes out. And that's okay. This is the high point of my life. If any of you are familiar with the Murphy's machines, the MM500, this is the processor processing system that's based on that processor. It's made out of new 500 gallon fuel tanks rather than propane tanks that he normally uses. Uh, this is, is located in Barbuda, the Leeward Islands in, in the Caribbean. It is absolutely at the end of the, the supply chain. Uh, it's very hard to get parts. And <clears throat> right now what we're waiting on is a supply of oil. Plus I need to make another trip back with the, with the list of stuff that I accumulated the first time I was over there to get this thing up and running. Uh, and now we have interest from another party in the Virgin Islands that also wants to put up something so maybe I maybe I started something there I don't know uh, if I would say you take a picture of it if any of you want that picture I can email to you uh, NebraskaBioPro.com there's you can you can contact me there on that website there's me on chemistry I you know it's just I'm not a chemist I'm a, I'm a diesel mechanic by trade bending mechanic by trade uh, this is my neighbor's cat Oreo and he, did, he, he provided the photo opportunity one day so we just took advantage of it. I especially love the evil eye. He didn't like you having his picture taken anyway. Uh, well, but we, don't need, we don't need to know much about chemistry. But, so, and I apologize to, to Dr. Van Gerpen and the rest of you chemists in here. If I slaughter your trade, I, I apologize in advance. Uh, this is Tom Affleck. He is uh, he's the guy that should be up here giving this presentation. He's he's the brains. Uh, he's on InfoPop Forum as Bio Tom. If any of you have ever <coughs> gone there, this he came down about three years ago to visit me there in Nebraska. He was right at home because Friday night we had an ice storm. As you can see, the ice for you Californians here that is ice you're standing <laughs> on and and snow out here in the background and on, under his windshield wipers. Uh, it, was a, it was a nasty morning, but he walked up and shook my hand and said, did you do this just for me to make me feel at home? Yeah. He's, he lives about 50 miles north of Winnipeg. So he, he, he's a nice guy. But Tom can't be with us because he had a terrible accident about two and a half years ago. He was stopped to make a left turn. And he said the last thing that he remembered was looking in the rearview mirror and seeing a car. And this car, the guy was like 0.28% blood alcohol content, hit him. Lucky he had that one ton Ford Raptor, or one ton Dodge Raptor out him. Hit him in the back end, crushed the box up over the front door. Whoa. Hog mess. They had to cut the roof off to get him out. Uh, 17 herniated discs, 12 broken ribs. But he lived through it, you know. He was unaffected up here. He's still, if you ever get a chance to email him or transverse with him on the web, uh, on the InfoPop forum is where he's at, I highly recommend it. He's, he's one very knowledgeable man, especially on the acid. He's, I, questions I've had, I've bounced off him and he's got the answer right there. So I tried to absorb most of them. This is a picture of, that was sent to us yesterday uh, customer fuel works down in North Carolina. I saw there he is in the back there. His boss is here. The, the slaves are back there handling this, this oil. But this is <laughs> this is oil that titrated at 51. He did the acid esterification on it. One pass got it down to nine. And he called us on the way down here. Said, "What do we do now?" And you know, that my recommendations were, let's go to base. You know, I, I'm afraid in order to get it further than nine, you're gonna have to dehydrate it, you're gonna lose all your methanol, your 350 gallon batch, you know, you're gonna lose 35 gallons of methanol. They're not set up for methanol recovery yet. So he did, he went to base, he got 
You said over 90% conversion. And that's great because that oil, if you tried to go to base right away with it, you'd probably get 45 to 50% conversion. And it'd be hell to wash. I wouldn't like to try to wash it. Or try to clean the media if you're dry washing it, try to get out of it. But that's that's the fuel that came out of it and the 50. That's I've never seen oil, restaurant oil, waste vegetable oil that titrated that high. And he tells me he's got thousands of gallons. Mm -hmm. So, well, glad it works. <laughs> okay. Acidification works. It definitely works. It's, it, it's proven. There are only three things that will make it not work. That is water. That is our greatest nemesis in, in the base process and also in the acid process. Water will kill it. And of course, the, the process produces water. So you need to start with fuel just as absolutely dry as you can get it. Take pains to make it dry. The second thing is caustic. If you have residual caustic, if you have a, a processor that does not drain completely, like a, the, the old apple seed that so many of us started with, you got that belled out bottom, you got the drain above it, man, there's caustic and water down in there, and that's, you're, it's going to consume your acid to negate the caustic, and then it's gone. It's just not there available to work in your process. And the third thing is heat, or more accurately, lack of it. You got to have heat, and we'll get into that a little later. You need to, but these are the three things that will kill it. Other than that, it it absolutely works. If you if you don't make an operator error, it works. There's there's no doubt about that. Okay, the water, and this was touched on yesterday in one of the presentations. There are. There are three distinctly different areas of water in our WBO. There is free water, which is rainwater because the barrel was left open, wash water that got dumped in there instead of sent down the drain. A lot of places, but that, that's normally where it comes from. Uh, that stuff, we can, we're bringing that, that WBO up to 135 to process it anyway. The free water will drop out. So that, that's pretty easy water to get rid of. The second is what I call emulsified water. That's water that's, that's more hung up in the, in the oil. It's not free to drain out, but something's holding it in there. When you strain your oil through a barrel strainer or a sock strainer or whatever, you're going to take the french fries and the, the, the potato skins and uh, the breading and everything out. That's going to take a lot of this water with it because a lot of the water clings to that trash in the oil. So you're gonna get rid of a lot of it there. Some of it, however, is hung up, and the best thing you can do is agitate it in an open container and just let it evaporate. If, uh, if you can set up a fan to move a little air across it, so much the better. But pretty much natural convection. You got 135 degree oil circulating in the air in a 75 degree environment. It's gonna naturally draft away. So. You're okay there. That, that's the way you get rid of that. Can you do that with compressed air bubble? Yeah, you can. Uh, it probably takes a little longer, but yeah, you can you can put air through it. A lot of people do. I know. Uh, I got one customer that has got a a long. It's like a propane tank, only it's open top, and he's got three air lines in the bottom of it. He runs like five psi, bubbles a lot of water through it. He says he drives it. He, he does a sandy bray on it when he's done, and it's under a thousand, so he's he's happy with it. Anything to expose that moisture, get it in the air, and so yeah, as long as it's warm, it'll be bubbling. What about uh, through nozzle spraying down? That? that is probably that is probably the most efficient way of doing it. Uh, if Graydon has a nice oil drying setup on his site with a 55 gallon drum. You can go take a look at that and get some ideas. He's got a video of it running, and that's that's the very efficient way to dry it. With a fan going across to there. If you need to, you know, it's not absolutely necessary. It, it depends. If you're doing it enclosed in a shop, I wouldn't be because you know those of us that have done it, you get that oil vapor on everything, 
Uh, you know, I got I got insulation in my shop that I can't lean against. I'll stick to it. You know, you pull yourself away from it. The the third is bound water. That's more on the molecular level. I mean, that is that is water that is in there. Uh, it is in so tight that a lot of times the the sandy bray won't detect it uh, unless you leave it set for half an hour, something to uh, to get into it. Uh, it's hard to measure. It's hard to eliminate. But there's very little of it. Very, very little. This is bound up in there. Most of it we can get rid of. The caustic comes into play. Yes, great. What's the limits again for water? How low you want to get it before you do it? Ideally, get it under a thousand. But I think most people say that the three thousand for three thousand parts per million for the base process. For acid, we like to get it below a thousand because the water we, because we manufacture water in the process, and that just that, that can kill it. The water is the water is the number one thing that will shut it shut the process down. Uh, caustic. A lot of restaurants use caustic cleaner. Uh, when they're cleaning up, there's those that don't have a professional cleaner service come along. But then most those that have a professional cleaner service also they cart off their oil, so we don't get it. <laughs> we don't get it anyway. Anyway, unless we're buying it. Uh, he, he makes it hard to operate, doesn't he? <laughs> I didn't memorize this. I got to have my cheat sheet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the, the caustic cleaner then gets into the bin. Uh, a lot of times you can see, especially if you get in a 55 gallon barrel, you'll, you'll get oil out of the barrel and you'll have two to three inches of foam on the top of it. Looks like a good the foam and you can, you can scoop it up off of there and it'll keep its shape. That's a caustic cleaner in the oil. I don't know of anything else that causes it, but I do know I used to have one restaurant who was now out of business, but every time you'd go and get it, we'd, we'd take a cardboard box and we'd, we'd scoop off about three inches off the top of the barrels and throw it in their dumpster. Don't know, don't know what causes something interacting in the oil. Uh, a poorly draining processor. That's what we're talking about, the apple seed where you get bailed out on the bottom. Processor is very important. We'll, we'll touch on that a little later. Or Glycerin pre-wash. Everybody know what a glycerin pre-wash is? Okay, well, I know we got some new guys here. The glycerin pre-wash is taking your glycerin from this batch that you just completed. You got sitting here in QBs or something you need to dispose of somehow. Then you get your next load of oil in there, you warm it up, you titrate it. Oh my God, it titrates at 14. You dump the glycerin out of this batch into it because you still have methoxide, methanol, caustic, in that glycerin that's gone down, you dump it in there, you mix it up, you let it settle out, drain out again, titrate it, it titrates at 12. Because you've done a little reaction, you've, you've taken some of the utilized, your leftover chemicals from last time, but you also add caustic. So then if you try to go to acid, you got that to overcome. And the, the amount of acid we use is actually quite minimal, so you're not gonna gain anything with the glycerin pre war if you're going to do it, save it till you get oil that titrates to five. That's that, that's a good candidate for a pre-wash. Wash it, get it down to three and a half, go to base, and you're done. And you can you can acidize oil that goes to five too. A lot of times it isn't worth it because if you do an acid acidification, you're building another 24 hours into your process. So a lot of times that just isn't isn't worth the extra time. Most of us. That are making fuel for ourselves, not necessarily commercial, that they're doing it for ourselves. We don't happen to think to make biodiesel on Tuesday when we're leaving on a trip on Friday. See, so we're always pushed to get that biodiesel out of there and out the door. But don't take shortcuts. Uh, I, I can't say that enough. You know, we got it takes time to do this, what we're doing, making it from base or making it uh, with the acid esterification process, but do it right. You got time to do it. Do it right. There's, there's never, there's not going to be time to do it over. And although fuel is not completely reacted, yeah, you can burn it. 
I don't want to. I got a, I got a 2011 Power Stroke with a new Scorpion engine in it. I can only burn B20 and keep my Ford warranty in line. But by the time I'm out of warranty, somebody is going to figure it out how to strip that stuff off and make it run. Well, the fuel I put in that truck is going to be spot on. I mean, I paid $45,000 for it. I paid almost twice as much for that as I did my first house. <laughs> so uh, that one's going to get taken care of, you know, and it's probably going to be the last new one I ever buy. But we got time to do it. Do it right. Uh, don't don't take shortcuts. You can just say don't. You can take shortcuts, but learn how to do it right first, and then figure your process out from that. Your process will never be the same two times in a row. Oil always changes, even if it comes from the same restaurant. There's something different about it next time. So. Keep a log. Start out. It's just like when we went to the plant over here last night. The first thing they did outside the door, they had that they had that clipboard. They log where the oil came from, and it follows it all its life, all the way through the plant. We don't need to worry about that, you know, as, as small guys, because we know where it came from. It came from one or two or three places. But it's nice to know how, what the water content was, what the titration was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then when you have a problem with that oil. You can go back to that log. You can call Graydon or me or somebody and say, what did I do? Our first question is going to be, what did it titrate at? What's the water content? What did you do? How high did you heat it? Et cetera, et cetera. And if the, the common answer we get is, oh, I didn't take time to titrate it. OK, well, you know, OK, well, we, we, can, we can make some assumptions. We can go on from there. Well, you know, I don't remember. I think we processed it at about 120. You know, we got to have the information to go on. Uh, heat, heat will kill it. Actually, lack of heat will kill it. We use the same temperatures as we do with the, the base transesterification, which is 130 to 140 degrees. Uh, methanol evaporates off at 146 and a half to 148, depending on how far above sea level you are. You don't want to evaporate your methanol. You, you need that. You got to have that in the mix. Uh, if you have a closed processor, which everybody should, you can. You can get the temperature up there and it will, the, the methanol will evaporate, go to the ceiling and rain down on it. Well, that kind of keeps it out of the mix. But if you use too much methanol, then it'll puddle on top. It won't, it won't stay mixed in because they'll explain that why I won't do that in a minute. But, Acid acidification absolutely quits at 100 degrees. So you need, to, if you don't have a process that's set up where you continually heat, you have to have one that's well insulated so it'll hold that oil at temperature. That's the low, that's the, 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 the low. The low side. The low side is 100 degrees, yes. We actually want to, and if you, and a, a processor with one layer of a silver reflective insulation that all the farm stores sell around it. If you, if you get that up to 135 degrees and shut it down, shut the temp, have to shut the temperature down because you're using a spear heater or something and you can't, uh, you, it won't heat it when you're not mixing. It should hold it, you get 110, 115 overnight. And then you can always drain your sludge, and if you're not happy, take a 327, if you're not happy, heat it up and let it sit a little longer. You know, there's, it, it all just all depends on how much time you have to invest in it. Okay, here we go, chemistry. I, I'm assuming you're all aware of monodiatriglycerides and FFA. You know, you know what they are. We covered that. Graydon hit on it, and the ASTM guys hit on it yesterday, so. I won't go off, go into that. The FFA, the actual separate chains that are broken off the molecule that are floating around in there, uh, heat, age, and usage of the oil. High quantities of all three of these accelerate the breakdown. So if you get somebody that's fryer who's running 20 degrees over temperature, they're continually throwing french fries in there, uh, it, it can break down and your titration can get pretty high. It breaks off a lot of those chains. What we need to do is condition that chain to accept one molecule, to attach to a molecule of methanol. Uh, 
Graydon has a write up, and I left I left them in the car. I'll, I'll get that when we're done here. If any of you need it, Graydon's got it on his website. You can you can download it. Uh, in order to make fame, free uh, fatty acid methyl esters, we need to condition that chain. Uh, Graydon's write up on his blog. He said when it breaks off, it rusts off. It rusts off, breaks off, floats away. We have to condition that the end of that chain to accept that methanol molecule. Sand it down, if you will. Rough it up. Get it. Get the two to mate. So the sulfuric acid. Not all the chains can be converted. Some of them are too far gone. Uh, some of them are just too ordinary, antisocial. Just don't want to get along with the rest of the oil. Uh, when we get done, when we do get the, do get them coupled up, that is, <clears throat> that is a molecule of fame. That is biodiesel. We're actually making biodiesel with the sulfuric acid. Uh, the water is a byproduct of this reaction. That's where we're accumulating the water. That when it gets to that level, is going to stop. We're not going to have. It's not going to go any further than that. Uh, A E only converts the FFAs. I say that <laughs> it does work somewhat on the triglycerides, but very minimally. It's not even enough to worry about mentioning. It's not going to do, it's not going to do the process of your base. You're going to have to go to base after this is done. It will do some conversion, and it's quite probably the ones that are weak, the ones that are ready to break off anyway, It'll, it'll get off of their condition and turn them into biodiesel. Uh, the monodiet triglycerides or are basically unaffected for what we want to do. The untreated chains, these we can't do anything with, when we go to base, are going to attack, for a better word, they're going to interact with our <coughs> potassium or sodium hydroxide and convert to soap. And of course, the soap is something we need to get rid of down the line there when we go to washing or cleaning uh, this stuff. So we we want to get those out of there. High FFA, of course, makes high soap load. You just get you get lots of it. Uh, you can get low or incomplete conversion if you got high FFA because it's taking the catalyst that you need to do your base transesterification and consuming it. It's gone. So now you got X amount of catalyst and you're going to run short. So you're going to have some molecule of oils that don't get converted. And that, that's what we're trying. That's the main thing we're trying to stay out of. The low and low incomplete conversion is harder to wash. Uh, it's, uh, it can form and actually, it probably will form an emulsion. That is, you get you get the water bound up in the fuel, and you get something that looks a lot like mayonnaise. And then that's just something else. You that something else you have to deal with. Something else you have to break up. Uh, the test for free fatty acid, of course, is, is our titration. We usually abbreviate that as a T. You tell some, be talking to somebody, and they'll say, "Well, yeah, that was nine T K O H." Well. There's a titration of nine using using KOH as a as a catalyst. Uh, up to over five and up to twenty is an excellent candidate for acid esterification. You can convert that very very easily, very well. Uh, get it down to a, to a workable level very easily. Over twenty, it can be problematic just because of the amount of the water that we're converting, the amount of the water you're producing as we convert it, uh, you may have to make two passes. Now there's sometimes when you when you make, you start out with this T24 oil, and you, you do your you do everything right, you do your process, it only goes down to 12. Well, and you find out you made a you made a math error, or the water wasn't as dry as you thought it was, or something. So then you got a quandary. Then what do you do? You can sometimes, if you discover you've shorted yourself on methanol, sometimes all you need to do is warm it back up again, add a little methanol, add a little sulfuric, and proceed on down the highway again, and it'll go down. A lot of times, 
you're going to you're, you're at that end point and there's nothing you can do because you got a water load in there and it's suspended and drained three or four gallons off the bottom you still don't get it you got to dehydrate that load and to do that you're going to lose your methanol if you don't have methanol recovery it's going out uh, but you'll get the water vapor out and then you'll have dry oil that titrates at 12 and you can go do the acid esterification again you get it right down to three uh, if you go you take that oil don't do acid esterification go to base you're going to get somewhere between 40 and 60 percent conversion uh, and that, that's not good because dealing with byproducts uh, or glycerin is a problem for a lot of people I luckily don't have that problem I my shop is two blocks from the water treatment plant there in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we have an anaerobic digester. And they love they love seeing me come over with it, with five cubies full of glycerin. You know, that's like a case of Snickers bars. Just throw them in there in the microbe, and the microbials just go nuts for that stuff. Uh, I my best record I've taken T24 oil which I won't say where it came from, but it's the cowboy hat place that sells roast beef sandwiches. <laughs> Used to love their potato cakes. I, I don't go over there anymore, except on Monday, because they change the oil on Sunday night. So Monday is over. <laughs> uh, we <laughs> got it down to 2.75 in one pass. And that's, that's excellent. That, 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 is, that is good. Uh, we put a, lot, put a lot of time into drying that oil because I knew it was so nasty that it really had to be dried. And we did. We got it down and I was completely happy. Yes, sir? Um, just out of curiosity, how long was that um, pass and how did you measure the uh, the, the well, Both of them are just off the cuff. The, yeah. the, it, it sat, 20, I leave mine set 24 hours. Right. I, I, had my, I had my sulfuric in the morning. And we'll, we're going to get into the process here next. But I had my sulfuric in the morning, stir it up, and let it set, and it sets for 24 hours. I use a BioPro processor, uh, and I, I will say a BioPro type of processor is the best in the world to process with because the drain is at the absolute bottom. You got a tank, you got a, you got a slanted bottom. And then it goes down into a steep slant at the bottom, comes down to an inch. You got a one-inch pipe welded in there. It is the absolute bottom of that processor, so you can get everything out, and that's that is excellent. That's what we need. Yes, sir. So is the time the react needed for the reaction or for settling the water? In other words, you typically only mix the acid for 30 minutes or an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So does the reaction occur in that first hour, or does it need the next 24 hours for the reaction? Or no, the no, we're, we're going to get into that next, but no, it, it needs the time to react. It is not, your transesterification process, for the most part, is done in an hour, maybe a little, maybe a little longer. The acid process takes a while, so that's why we give it 24 hours. It may be done in 12. Uh, but it's uh, it, it's not a two-hour process. It takes some time to for the, for everything to interact. Okay. Any other questions? How long did did you dry that oil for? You were saying so. How long did you dry it? I think probably 24 hours. That's it. I stirred. See, with the BioPro, you just got a lid. You can take off the top, and you're open to the atmosphere. And it, it's power to the boat prop in there so it really turns the oil over good exposes it to the air and I took a sandy bread and I don't have my logs here with me but I took a took sandy bread test on that water and it was like over 5,000 and so I, I put it in there and I, I think that oil I think I dried for two days because after the first day it was down to about 1500 and I was not in a rush for the oil so oh, let's get it down let's see if we can get it down I think I got it down around 675 before it just, I couldn't get it anymore. I, I did a sandy braid test and then came back like three or four hours and it was still in the same place. I said, well, that's, that's it. I've got what I'm going to get. So that, that's when we went, that's when we went for the acid. Yes? Just, just for, uh, we target less than 2%. We don't do much acid certification. 
we target less than two percent in Asia. Always work. Less than two percent or less than point two percent? It's really less than two percent. So twenty thousand ppm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that's high. You get water. You get water formation anyway. So you have to pull water off it. Yeah. This is just time. Can't predict how long it's going to take. Yeah. Time is time is an issue when you do when you do an acid. That's why it's it, it's a little easier for us home brewers than it is for the guys that are doing it commercially. Yes. Personally, for you though, you see the yield makes up for the loss of time. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, I, I I guess I can't quantify it because that T twenty four oil. If I tried to go to base, would you get fifty percent? You get fifty gallons out of a hundred. Acid's cheap. So. Boy, acid, yeah, acid's cheap. It, that's yeah. not the issue. The issue is now you got to try to clean it, and that takes yes. a gazillion hours. Yeah, you know, yeah, you not anticipate. Yeah, you've got high soap contests. It's not only you lose fifty percent of the oil, you also your 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 workload is increasing increasing exponentially. You're making yourself work with that high titration oil, but it can be taken care of. You know, just like my guy there in North. North Carolina, he's got thousands of gallons of that oil. You know, it's available to him, he can make it work. Uh, but this, oh, the question was also, was how did I make the 95, figure the 95%? Just by number of gallons, number of gallons of fuel that I pumped off the processor. You know, I've, I've got a, I've got a hundred gallon transfer tank that I just, I pump off into. So I was about that far from the top. Well, that's, I got 95 gallons out of 100. That's, that's pretty good. So no, it was not measured exactly. Although I do have a flow meter on mine now. So next time if I have to do that, I can measure it exactly. Okay, the process. Uh, we're running till 9.15, right, Todd? Or do we have yeah, nine, 9 o'clock? Okay. Okay, well, we'll be done. We'll be done in time for that. That will be a process. The correct processor type is critical. You got to have something that drains completely at the bottom. Uh, the Murphy's machines, the MM500, I don't know, the MM60s, that's set up in the same way. You've got to be at the lowest point on the processor is where you got to be able to drain, which is also nice for taking your samples mid process or whatever. But you got to get rid of that glycerin, you got to get rid of that water and that sludge after you do the process. Uh, you got to drain all the water out of it. Uh, when you're doing your washing, etc., you need to be able to maintain the heat. You got to keep it over that 100 degrees. For those of us in the Midwest that have to operate in that ice storm every once in a while, you got to be able to keep that heat up. Insulation will do it to a point. Uh, silicone pad heaters on the bottom is great. You know, Graydon and I both sell the, the silicone heaters that go around the barrel. Uh, if, if you can modify something like that, off-size pads, silicone heaters that you can attach to something and, and wire them in and make them work. So there's, there's lots of ways to make the heat. You got to remember that you're working with methanol, so you got to have some methanol vapors, so stay away from the propane. Uh, you need to have aggressive mixing, either with a, a, a pump that's really thrashing it good, uh, with a with a, a boat prop with a stir that, that's turning it over, you need to be aggressive in the mixing phase. You really need to get these, get the chemicals, get the oil, get everything interacted and working with each other. Okay, start your log entry. I'm sure, you know what what you put your T down there, put the date on there. In the ASTM test segment yesterday, figure figure yourself out a code. If I was going to start a code this morning, the code would be uh, 81201. It'd be the first batch on August 12th. Well, August of 812, that'd be 819 And I usually I only make a batch, two batches a week at the most, so I'd drop the 01. But you know, just get a date code on it. And then you can put that date code on the on your sample that you save, on everything. Enter it on your log. Get all that information in so when something goes wrong, you can refer to it. Or if everything goes right, you can refer to it. Because this, you know, you, we can lay out this process, but it changes. As you go, you know your oil. We can tell you the general 
condition what's going to happen generally when you do that process but you're the one that knows your oil you know where it's made from what it comes from what its content is how high it titrates uh, etc so it always changes if you know what you did last time it'll make next time so much easier prepare the oil dry it clean it strain it make sure it's dry that's the big thing the thing we keep hammering on make that oil dry uh, heat it to 135 to 140 degrees just like you're going to go to base do your titration find out what your titration is then we add the methanol to the oil 8 to 10 percent by volume don't be under the assumption that extra methanol is going to make it faster make it better make it easier or whatever the extra methanol actually will work against you it'll float so and it'll take some of your some of your methanol will take some of your crud to the top that's a little hard to decant it off the top of that processor so keep your oil at eight to ten percent and and the crud will drop to the bottom uh, use virgin methanol only no reclaimed methanol unless you run through a molecular sieve to get the water out of it you don't you want there again it's a source of water you know, or, or the, the methanol that we tested in Graydon's presentation yesterday was virgin methanol right out of the drum in my shop. 99% uh, methanol, methanol, it tested at 98.7. So that means it's 1.3% water. And that's, that's a little bit, if you want to dehydrate your methanol, that's, you know, it might be easy to do in a lab, but in, in our environment, it's, it's a little tougher to do. So we want to use the virgin methanol because even the good methanol you recover is going to be 97% for the most part. Uh, don't go heavy. Keep it at 8 to 10%. The excess methanol will cause a float, and you got to have 10% anyway to make up your methoxide because you got to make sure you're going to, you got enough left to dissolve your catalyst. When you, when you get ready to go to base after this all. The methanol that's not consumed in our process will remain in the oil. So it's there, it's available for the base process when we, when we go to that. Okay, it's not, uh, it stays in there. Some of it will come out with the crud and the excess acid in the bottom. We'll get to that in a minute. We add the sulfuric acid. I strongly recommend against mixing the methanol and sulfuric and pouring it in. There are two or three websites out there that promote doing it that way. Now, sulfuric acid is nasty stuff. You know, KOH is nasty stuff. Sulfuric acid will hurt you. And it'll, you know, if you get, if you splash some in your eyes, you're gonna be blind before you can go rinse that out. I mean, it's, it's over. So wear safety glasses uh, or a shield, something when you're handling this stuff. Uh, and just add it, add the methanol, mix it up, or while you're mixing it up, pour in the sulfuric acid. What, what concentration of sulfuric acid are you using in this case? I use 90, and that's, that's what I sell is 90%. Uh, I have heard over, you want to use sulfuric acid, it's over 70%. There again, the other 30% is water. That's the contaminant, the, the, that's not the percentage of sulfuric acid. So you want it as, for, as pure as possible. There is some 98% available out there in, in lab reagents, etc. I'd be real careful of people that tell you they're selling you 98% sulfuric acid because that stuff is difficult. Uh, it, it's difficult to manufacture. It's expensive to manufacture. You can get 98%, which is also called fuming sulfuric acid, although that has some other content in it that doesn't, doesn't affect what we do, so we can use the fuming sulfuric acid. But those people that are on eBay or whatever that tell you they're selling you 98% sulfuric, I would really doubt it. But for stuff that's electronic, we actually do have a carboy, 15 gallon carboy of sulfuric, it's 98%. Okay. Shop. Yeah. And it is dangerous. And also remember, the chill compatibility of sulfuric is counterintuitive, meaning that the lower concentration, the more water you put in it, the more aggressive it actually becomes. So you can actually store high concentrations of sulfuric, but it actually store carbon steel and it's stainless steel. And yeah. But you move down, so, so when you're at 70%, if you add moisture to it, then it's more aggressive, so that's when you want to use stainless. It's very interesting, you have to, to really look at your materials compatibility when you're 
Yeah. And glass is an ideal container for sulfuric, but you don't want to knock it off the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's why I've always stayed away from it, you know. If you buy high class reagents from, from uh, your, your local chemical house or, or online or something, a pretty good probability you're going to get it in glass. And that's, you know, that's a little scary to me. Uh, okay, the, the uh, menu that we use, we take the, if the titration is up to 12, well any titration, take any titration, we subtract our desired endpoint. And be realistic about it, I use three. You know, the people say, zero, I want to get it out of zero FFA. It's never going to happen. So you use three, uh, and then you, if it's 12 and under, you take that amount times 0.15 milliliter per liter. So I use a 100 gallon processor, 380 liters. I usually round it up to 400. You got some leeway here. You know, just do it. You can do it so you do it in your head. Uh, and then that's the amount of sulfuric acid that you need. So if I got oil that's 12 minus 3 is 9, at uh, the 1.5 is, is 13 and a half milliliters per liter. I've got 400 liters almost, so that would be 54, 540 milliliters of sulfuric acid in that 100 gallons. So a little over half a liter is what it's going to do. So you got five, six bucks worth of acid that's going to knock your titration from 12 down to 3. And you would invest way more than that in KOH and in labor if you're just going to go based on the F-top. And, and it's great. Norm has basically set internally what the target number he's got for MFA as a finished product. But you can tune tune this so you can adjust it so it gets you, if you were a 20, you can get it to the 10 and things like that. Oh, yeah. The issue is that you can't forget the top. It's yeah. very difficult to do that. So, see how it is. This is a very low form. Basically says we're trying to get three FFA oil all the time. Yes. I also the, the formula I need to give credit to a guy named Dave Kenny. Uh, I was in North Carolina, South Carolina, East Coast, Southern, Central East Coast, there someplace. He's the guy that originated this formula so many years ago. And then him and Biotom and several other people uh, on the InfoPop forum refined it and got it down to this point. And it works. It works very well. Uh, a lot of times if you get uh, the higher titration, over 12, like up to 24, use 0.2. It just increase your, your acid level just a little bit. So that, if you use 0.2, in that same scenario, it's on 9, you get 18 milliliters. Uh, you got 400, so you got, what, 720? So if you get someplace between 540 milliliters and 720 milliliters, you know, right around 600 or so. Because it's a little difficult, you got a 100 milliliter beaker that's that's probably marked in 50 milliliter lines at the best, and you want you want 434 milliliters. You know, it's a little little tough to judge. So get in the ballpark. If you got a little excess acid, it's better than being a little short. Let excess acid, the acid's heavier than the oil. It's heavier than the water, it's going to the bottom. It's going to the crud. You'll drain it off. When, you're, when you get down to this point, down to the bottom, you'll drain that crud off. Okay, stir, mix aggressively 15 to 30 minutes. Just make sure that everything is, is well interacted there. Leave the heat on, let it set undisturbed. No more stirring, no more nothing. Leave it set undisturbed for 24 hours. And just be just be clear that um, you've got the the titration there, the formula. It's uh, it's 0.15 milliliters per liter for the under 12. And yes, 12 and under. Yeah, there's a mistake. There's a typo, there's a typo, there's a typo there. there in your formula. That'd be mine. <coughs> Sorry, it is supposed to be 0.15 in the formula. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Say that again. Graydon had to reformat this you this see, morning since it was fit. Titration 12 and under. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it's written in English 0.15, but the actual math formula has 0.2. It's a typo. It's supposed uh, to be 1. Point, okay. 0.15. Yes, it is 0.15. And 
if you use 0.2 for everything, it's not going to hurt anything. It really isn't. It's going to work. You're just adding more. Though. Yeah, you're just using a little more. You're just maybe unnecessary product that you're throwing in there that really isn't going to do anything for you. There's where your log will tell you. There's where your log will help you out. Because you can see last time that, you know, and you're not going to take your crud, your drain off there and have it assay. It's way too expensive to find out how much extra sulfuric you got in there. Maybe if you were doing 10,000 gallon batches, you got a plant, you got your GC sitting there anyway, you got your chemist who's there, who's there picking his fingernails, you're paying him anyway here. Tell me how much excess acid we're doing. For us guys, nah, eh, we ain't even going there. That's way too much. Okay, let it set undisturbed, heat on, and then come back after 24 hours, drain your sludge. You may not have anything. You may just look like perfectly good oil in the bottom. It's gonna be it's gonna be dependent on the oil that you put in there is what you're gonna get out of the bottom of it. Uh, note the color if you do have sludge. If you get nice black oil stuff, sludge draining off the bottom, that means your oil going in was dry. If you get more of a caramel colored, you had wet oil when you started with, and I can tell you right now, when you when you do your titration you're not going to be terribly happy because it's going to go from 12 to 7 or you know you're going to have to you but you can do it again that you haven't made that much water and a lot of the water came out because the sulfuric acts somewhat as a water mop it'll take the water with it when it goes down when it's done. <coughs> yes sir so at that point would you recommend testing for water again before you re, re acid sterification well you you can but there again it's kind of a waste of time because you need to decide up front, is it worth dehydrating the oil? You're going to lose your methanol. And if you got methanol recovery, you got the time, yeah, you can do it. You can dry it down, recover the methanol in a couple hours, dry it down, do it again, and you'll go to three very easily. It, it, yeah, it, it's easiest to do it right the first time. Make sure your oil's dry going in. Don't, don't try to cut that corner with acid esterification because that will absolutely buy you. Uh, as I like to tell people, we get, you know, we got the three problems. We went over the three problems. The problem is water and caustic and heat. But the, the problem we have with this is water because we're making it and it kills it. Uh, it. It can be a little tough to tell when you're, if you don't get a definite layer of crap on the bottom, you start draining and it looks like perfectly good oil. Uh, you will notice that it's highly methylated, mentholated. When you drain it, you'll get a sniff of that the first time and you know you, know you got into some crud there. So you drain that down. Uh, you can save that for methanol recovery if you're doing it. Don't mix it with your glycerin because somebody might want your glycerin to make soap. So you don't want sulfuric in there for them. Uh, you know, small batches, drain at least a couple liters off. By small batch, I'm saying a 50, 50, 60 gallon batch, drain at least a couple liters. So you get that excess acid and you get the whatever water is in there. Uh, you're probably not going to have a visible layer until you get up to the 15 and higher type of oils. You also don't like to see, uh, generally speaking, the glycerin and sulfuric Yes, yes, it makes them. It, it has a chemical reaction of its own. Yeah, that's that's the rot makes. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what Hitler used to uh, to <laughs> to eradicate, try to eradicate the Jews way back when. Yeah. So yeah, we don't we don't need that. We want to keep you around. You need to come back next year. <laughs> uh, there's probably no visible layers. If, there, if, if it is layered, drain your black or your creamy colored layer off, plus take about another two liters to a gallon. Once you get past that sludge, you're gonna have a little excess acid, a little watery, heavier stuff. So drain a little bit past that. Uh, stir, stir it up good, retitrate, and go to base. And that's it. We're done, we made it. <laughs> Questions? One more slide. Was there one more? I was done. McGraden got something else to say here. Oh, okay. Go to base. Uh, before you go to base, add 
the methanol in that you drained, or whatever you drained off, if you drained off two gallons, put two gallons of methanol back in there to make sure, because we don't want to starve the base, the transesterification. The base process. Here is the most important part, the most, the new, most newbies, and I never considered it until Bio Tom pointed it out to me. When you recalculate derive at your catalyst that you need for your next type, for your base, make sure you use the quantity of oil you're now dealing with. You're de I'm dealing with 100, plus I added 10 gallons of methanol, and I drained three off. I got 107 gallons in that processor. You no longer have 100 gallons. So when you do your calculation to arrive at your KOH, use the correct gallonage. Pump it up because you got to. You're, you're titrating 107 gallons now. You got some extra in there. Uh, react for about an hour. You do a 327 off the top to make sure you got full conversion. Uh, and if it passes, you're done, shut it down, drain your glycerin, go to wash. Wash and dry. We got two minutes left. Anybody else? Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. In this process, you show that you're using 10% methanol. Yeah. So when you do this base process, you're only adding back it, so your total amount of methanol since acid esterification yeah. was. So you're using less methanol? No, you're using the same amount of methanol you just do two processes with it. Yes, in the base, you're using less. So you so, only use 10 yeah, we, 10 percent more in right. the extraction because yeah. you've already had the previous 10 percent. That's right. Yeah, okay. we we basically use 20 percent. Just in, like in the it. process, so we use 10% in AE, and then we use 10% to mix our methoxide and go to base with that. You, yes, you mentioned um, that if you drain off, let's say, you know, a gallon of the crud uh -huh. to put another gallon of methanol, yeah, and then use 10%. I mean, so there's just so I understand, there's like a little bit extra methanol that you're throwing back in there. Yeah, you are because okay. when the first time you get a sniff of that that gluck that you're getting off the bottom of that, the methanol will just hit you. It'll just hit you between the eyes. It is, yeah. I swear to God, that glycerin smells more like methanol than methanol does. I don't know where it gets it from, <laughs> but it is highly methylated. It's very aromatic. Yes, sir. So in that whole process, since you're heating it, if you don't have a recovery system, you're going to lose some of that methanol anyways in vapor, too. So that's why you want to add and make sure you get your full amount. Yeah, well, your processor is sealed. You're not going to lose and You should not be losing anything in the process. but. Yeah, if you're if you're not recovering, your methanol is going to go out with the glycerin. There's a little bit of methanol left in your fuel, and a little bit of KOH or NA, whatever you use for catalyst to react with. So yeah, but that that usually goes on washing. Uh, some of the bigger processors will recover the methanol out of their fuel before they go to, and if you're dry washing, you should because that releases the soaps. But uh, a lot of people don't; they just wash it. I'm one of them. I wash it and get rid of it. Yes, sir. Uh, what are the material compatibility issues for using sulfuric acid? I've heard about guys that their tanks start to grow. And you probably just, I can't know what the latest on it. I have never had any pro any problem with it. I I use plastic to measure it with. I've I've used I've made many batches in glass. Uh, my I used it in my apple seed, which was carbon steel. Mm -hmm. I use it in my bio pro, which <laughs> is, is stainless steel. I've never really had compatibility issues with sulfuric. Uh, other than every once in a while you get a drop on your skin, that gets, that gets a little, that gets compatible in a hurry. Uh, I did, I do sell sulfuric acid on eBay, and I had one guy, some, some hippie from New York, write me and complained because it wouldn't remove his fingerprints, and he wanted to know what the hell kind of crap I was selling. And I said, uh, I don't know, I work with biodiesel, you know. <laughs> call, call your local sheriff, he'll tell you. <laughs> so I guess he left you negative feedback. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. No, he never bought anything. He never bought anything. Yeah, he, he did. No, I don't remember that he did leave me any negative. So luckily I have 2,000 2, shout outs there and no negatives. So. <laughs> Uh, that's that. Any other questions or are we done here? Thank you. You've been a good audience. I appreciate you. <laughs>